If you're desperate for affirmation, approval, attachment, if you're grateful to be chosen, like I said, um, so you're not too, it makes you like not too choosy in return because you're so grateful that you're chosen. You're like, well, I'm not gonna be too picky because I mean, if I'm too picky, then no one's gonna want me. So I'll continue. If you're settling instead of being selective, then you're making stupid dating decisions. You're doing these situationships for the guy rather than for yourself. And I think a lot more women need to kind of think of like, okay, what do I actually want from a guy? Like, does he meet my criteria? Because these guys go down these lists themselves for us all the time. Giving all these random people that you come across so much grace and letting them do X, Y, and Z to you. Like some of these examples that I've read, I'm just like, girl, and how long were you with this guy? You met this guy two weeks ago. Okay, nice. Am I in love with this person? Do I really like this guy? Or am I in love with the fact that I really want a boyfriend? Like I'm 31 years old and I want a boyfriend and I want to like start settling down. You can't find that in just like some random guy. Like it takes work, I think. And a lot of us want to skip over the work and that's when I think shit becomes really bad because over the years, or over the months, it could be weeks, days, people will show their true colors. Like no one is ever going to be the exact person that they are those first two months that you're dating or two weeks, whatever it is. It, it is a facade. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. Honeymoon phase is very real. Ask yourself, why are you settling? Why are you not more selective? And why are you not more critical when it comes to dating long-term? You should be very selective. You should have a huge list. Honestly, you should. A lot of people like to poke fun at women and be like, well, you're never gonna find someone that fits that entire list. It's like, yeah, no shit. I'm never gonna find someone that fits this whole list. I can still have a list of things that I would like in a partner. Is that a crime? To have things that I would desire in the person that I'm gonna be with the rest of my life? I don't think that's a crime. I think we should all have that. And it's not to see if they match each thing, it's to see and outweigh. Like, okay, do they even have like half the things I actually want out of a guy? Yeah, you have to make these really strong emotional decisions and you have to stand in them and you have to be very firm because you have to be the person in control of everything that you have going on in your life, especially when it comes to dating. Like this is something that we really control because it's you, it's a choice. So be selective and be very mindful and conscious of why you're dating this person. Like the excuse can't be the dick is so good every damn time, okay? We have to kind of like cut it out after a certain age. Like it has to kind of like, all right now, fun's over. Was it really fun? <laughs> Trauma is over. History is not destiny. You will have free will to overcome, grow, change, reinvent yourself, create, and pour into the person that you are. If you just let go of, let's say you've been in like a four year long relationship and you feel like the history is kind of like weighing you down, you know deep down in your heart that this is not it and that you're really just settling because you're like, well, I'm old. I've kind of been through it with this person a lot. I feel kind of washed. I don't feel cute anymore. I've been really, really comfortable in my relationship. Pause that, look in the mirror, Look, ask yourself, why do I look like this? Like, why do I feel like this? Like, why am I like shit right now? Oh, because I poured everything into maintaining this bullshit ass relationship that I haven't even had time to think about myself. I don't even enjoy looking in the mirror because I look a hot ass mess. Gained 60 pounds, fuck. Acne out of control. All these things are not making you ugly, but it's just a, to show you how much a toxic relationship can change you from someone that might've really enjoyed going outside and being outside and being active to someone who sits on their ass all day and just is depressed in front of the TV because their partner is a bitch. Turning to mechanisms of instant avoidance to deflect the risk of failure or hurt. Also, we really need to learn the difference between being hurt and disappointed that someone rejected you versus you're worthless because this person rejected you. You know what I mean? Like you can be sad that this shit didn't work out, but to question your entire existence because this person decided they don't want to be with you, I think it's a little much because they are one out of billions of people. So to think that you're worthless because of this one opinion, you're giving them a lot of power and you need to give yourself that power because they're really not that powerful. They're really not that special. They're not, we, we make them special because we think they're so special. They're not that special. We make them special. Remind yourself that every time that bitch gets out of line. Connecting versus attaching. A lot of us will attach onto guys because, or anyone, because it feels secure. It's like I have security in my relationship. I have someone that I know I can always lean on and that is there and I can build with. This is my person. 
How do you guys connect though? Like, what do you guys connect on? Because there have been so many different people that I've encountered where it's like, okay, sure, there's like an attachment there, but we don't connect. Like we, there's not that like spark or that fuse that feels like, oh, it's clicking. And you need to feel like it's clicking with the person that you're gonna be with because girl, come on now. Like, how long are we gonna like keep this facade going? You're going to reach a breaking point. And also the motivation like to do all this work doesn't just fall from the sky. Like you have to genuinely actually want like a change, something different. And that's with anything in life. Like you have to be dedicated and put in the work and it's not sweet. It's not sweet, but I think that's what makes it so good because it's like bitter and harsh and hard and hurts. It's gritty, but in return you get like bliss. You have the potential to do so much, so do more if i don't do this work i will always feel this pain yeah so a lot of us will hide like a lot of the stuff we don't want to face like in relationships because it feels so good and it feels so like high to be with someone and like sex feels really good and love feels really good and being love bomb feels amazing so a lot of us are going to use this stuff to kind of just like mask over anything shitty that might have happened like in our entire life dependent people acquire self-esteem that they lack through the attachments of, to other people. So, I mean, it just goes back to what I was saying. Like, if you don't do that work, this is where you're gonna find your self-esteem. And you're gonna do whatever it takes to get the self-esteem from these people. And if that means kissing ass and not being your true self because you need the approval of others, men, women, whatever you like, then yeah, you're not really living, are you? Too many of us would rather be with someone shitty than alone. Yes. We're lonely, being lonely sucks. It hurts, it's, it like really physically hurts to be lonely not to feel like you have someone that you can talk to, whether it be friends, family, partners, like it hurts to feel lonely. Like it's like physically it hurts um, and emotionally. So I get it, but I would so much rather feel that than feel the bullshit that comes with being so close and intimate with someone that is just not for me because that in itself feels like a fucking shit storm. So a lot of us are resistant to taking risks because we've failed in the past, but I think that we failed in the past with those risks because we weren't ready to take those risks. We just kind of went and took the risk because everyone was telling us like, we'll take a risk or else you never know. It's like, oh, I kind of know, okay? So we have to be mindful when it comes to taking risks. You have to like think about, okay, what's gonna happen when I take this risk? Am I really, equipped to deal with what's gonna happen? Am I gonna flop on my ass? So like assess the situation and you make that proactive choice for yourself. Don't ever just do something impulsive. Like think about everything that you do. Because when we resist taking these risks, we end up in these relationships with these people who are on that level of where we were when we met them, but we wanna grow and they're still here at this level. So they're not changing you're ready for change you need to go ahead and start changing because this person doesn't want to change this person's kind of resistant to change because they're comfortable and they don't feel like there's anything wrong with them but you who wants change are kind of like hinting like hey babe like we should go to the gym like we should go on walks we should go um couples therapy and they're like bitch nothing's wrong with me go to hell and you're like okay um because they don't feel like anything's wrong with them but you know something's wrong with you. So you wanna do all these things to work on each other when you really need to work on you. So bump that bitch. Think about yourself. You wanna go on a walk? You wanna go work out? You wanna eat better? You wanna go to therapy? Do it. You're by yourself. OMG, it's not impossible. You can do it and you're gonna feel so good. And one, hello bitch, you're gonna be independent. And you're gonna be doing all this work alone now so when you get to that super sweet spot after getting in that routine of like just having this consistency in your life i think you'll really appreciate yourself your mind your self-drive your determination and you'll really not appreciate the bitches around you that you can kind of see have been holding you back but you don't have to be mean about it you can kind of just realize that and then you know go about it in that way but yeah that's really it for this one i think that was stupid dating stupid something either way it's stupid and we all deal with it but we can totally be done with this i'm trying to be done with this cycle i'm currently in a really weird cycle but i am unlacing myself from this and it's working and i want to share it with you guys so i hope you enjoyed this video just as much as you liked that first one and 
Kim will be back with more talking videos soon. I'm gonna get this channel organized, so be patient.